<laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a problem. Eat my food. He's down there sucking up my food again. It's the first thing I did when I came here. Mm-hmm. And then when you leave out of you're probably like, I'm hungry. And then I'm like, how come these waffles I'm always go? I'm grab some waffles. <laughs> yep. That, you know, when we leave the house and we get ready to come over. You think this giant ego. I'm telling your mother, stop saving those brown bags. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, like, hey, like, oh, should we eat before we go? I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> we good. <laughs> but, dad, it's also sacrificing for your family. Yeah, okay. Yeah, how many times I got to do that? <laughs> yeah. So, on this episode, Man, we're talking I about sacrifice. did what Abraham did. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you don't know the story, y'all go look it up yourself. I don't feel right telling it because yeah, it's me we're talking about. Um, but on this episode, we're talking about sacrificing for our, the family. So the last episode I had talked about, and it was very blunt, and it was very out there, and it was just sound horrible, but we kind of explained it, but we want to go into details a little bit more. I was talking about the decision to get married and have kids was me sacrificing a certain lifestyle for my family. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Can, all right. I'm going to make it sound even worse. Okay, Dad? I'm going to make okay. it sound even worse. You know what I would, what I would have done, and this is gonna sound like I planned it and all, but like this is what I probably would have done. <clears throat> if I was by myself, I would live in an apartment that's like kind of up, maybe in a downtown area, mm-hmm. apartment high, surrounded by like glass windows, and that's where I would stay. Um, I probably would shop at the nearest health food store. Uh, actually, I probably have it. DoorDash to my house. I'm not going shopping. Oh my um, goodness! And and do you know what I would eat? Ramen noodles. <laughs> no, it's not waffles. It's, it's not that yeah, waffles. Is in there. It's not. It's not that simple. Like when I lived by myself in apartments in Cuyahoga Falls, this is what I ate every day. No joke. I had for breakfast. I had eggs, sausage, and toast. For lunch, I had. Usually just like chicken, but the, re- the reason why I had chicken is because it was left over from yes the day before. Or a peanut butter jelly sandwich. For dinner, I'll have chicken, potatoes, and mixed vegetables. Every single day, that's what I ate. And then sometimes, I might... I don't really eat waffles at my house. I eat them at your house. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, and so I didn't really eat them at my house, but that's what I ate every single day. My grocery bill for two weeks was like bucks. And I told Ayla, like, when Ayla and I uh, started dating and then, like, she would come over and eat and stuff like that, like, I told her, like, my grocery bill is $80 biweekly. And she could not believe it. I'm Mm. like, yeah, I get the big pack of chicken. It's like 12 12 or 14 pieces of chicken in there, big bag of mixed vegetables, a box of eggs. It would be, like, 60 eggs in there, Uh, two packs of sausage, bread. A bag of potatoes, and then like sometimes I had to get like spices and stuff like that. But uh, jelly and peanut butter. That's what I. That ain't all you had because you come over here, your mother pile you up with stuff going home. I'm like, what happened to all this stuff I had? Well, I'm just talking about stuff. I, I'm just talking about stuff I pay for. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't talking about that. <laughs> but that's what I ate every day, right? Mm-hmm. And so I told Ayla that she's like, "There's no way." <clears throat> I don't believe it. And then when she told me what her grocery bill is, I was like, how? Like, her grocery bill is well over 100 some bucks by herself. But Ayla's buying, like, all kind of extravagant fruits and veggies and stuff like that. And <laughs> I'm like, we're not going to eat that. But, yeah. And so that's what I would do. Like, if I, I would have an apartment like that, buy my set groceries um i will wake up the normal times that i wake up but i'll push content all throughout the day come home eat play video games maybe put to put together some couple training plans Mm -hmm. content go to sleep wake up the next day and do it all over again that's what i do you want to hear what i do now though that yeah i was gonna say when did the transition happen okay so Just talk about having two kids. All right, I'm not going. I'm not even going to talk about it with Des, right? Because mm-hmm. this is what this is what my life looks like right now. <clears throat> so I wake up at like four, four a.m. to five a.m. depending on the day. <clears throat> I get ready. If Des is coming to the gym with me, I'm getting him ready, and then we go to the gym. I'm training from like five thirty a.m. depending on the day. Five thirty a.m. to about ten, the nine thirty ten o'clock. Then I come home. Right when I get home, it's game time. 
Uh, um, Des and Weston, I'm playing. I play with them, or like sometimes Ayla will have them getting ready, eat breakfast or whatever, or like I would just try to help put some things away around the house. But a lot of times we sit. Um, <clears throat> I try to occupy the kids a little bit so Ayla can get a little bit of a break if both of them are at home. Mm -hmm. Or and then I she usually has breakfast and I'll eat breakfast or whatnot. Then we'll sit there for a couple of hours and we'll just like talk, play with the kids, and then around like. 1 30 between like 1 30 to about like 2 15 i'm getting ready to go back to the gym so usually after that i get my i get a coffee i drink my coffee at like 1 30 2 o'clock get to the gym i train from like 2 2 30 to about 7 7 30 then <clears throat> i get home I go to the gym is about 25 30 minutes away i get home um, I'm occupying the kids while Ayla's finishing up dinner. If she's, you know, if we're making dinner that day and then <clears throat> we all eat and then Des goes crazy for about an hour. Like he runs around th throwing stuff, playing stuff. Then eventually he crashes. Weston usually falls asleep first. He crashes. I plan on getting content done, but half the time I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I wake up the next day and I do it all over again. So the content usually for me gets done in the morning in between clients. So like if it's um if I have like a, a five thirty client between like five thirty to six, usually seven, seven thirty is open. People don't schedule that time because they're either getting ready to go to work or whatever. So seven, seven seven thirty is when I start putting together stuff. Next client usually in about like eight o'clock and then yeah, so I usually have an hour and I dictate to that. And so that is my schedule now. So the schedule that I had before, schedule now totally different and where we live. So <clears throat> and and doing all that and, and I know then past I was t I told you that your life would change and yeah. things would change like that. Did you ever foresee the experience and like you're experiencing now and, and still going to you still got some stuff to do yeah and things going to happen and you're going to have more experiences did you ever experience it they'll think your experience would be like it is no not really actually and i know we mm -hmm. talked about it on the podcast before i was like oh not much going to change but it 100 yeah. percent has right yeah and so but honestly like i won't ch i don't change it right i like that lifestyle midday if we like for if we if it's warm and you know things are going well with the weather, like we go out and do stuff. Like we'll go to the park or like mm -hmm. a couple times we went to the zoo and stuff like that. Cause I like doing stuff. I like going places and stuff like that. And having the the boys makes it fun too. So I don't I don't change or want to change any of that. That lifestyle that I had before, I feel like I just do that because I just had the time to do it. But now like. Almost life has like a purpose a little bit. I'm doing these things in the gym or in the gym and trying to get all this stuff going so we can be able to do more stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Before, like how I described like what I would have probably been doing or what I was doing before, like Ayla and the kids and all that other stuff. I was doing it because like you're just trying to build a career, right? There's no reason. There's no push for me to do it. Mm -hmm. And now there's kind of a reason to do that type of stuff and so like granted i don't put as much time and effort into that type of stuff as i did before because of like responsibilities but i look at it like i pri priorities right i have a prior my priority is to be with the hang out with my family and do that other stuff and that other stuff that needs to be done fuels it but and realizing that i am sacrificing like this progression of like the things I'm doing. I also try to put myself in a position to bring on people that can help me and things that help me with the things I don't really prioritize. If that makes sense. Okay. Based on what you said, what you just explained to us and the, the, the listeners. Dang, I forgot there's listeners that I thought I was yeah. just talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we do on the podcast. Yeah. But you're now ready for this question. Oh, boy. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> the big question. Wait, I don't even know what it is. What's you, the question? You, you don't know what it is. And and because you can really have a gain the perspective now because you have all that stuff going on. And that's the transition from being just by yourself and now with a family. You doing all that you're doing now, mm -hmm. all the stuff you explained prior to being married as single, now being married, yeah, being a husband and being a dad. Yeah. 
yeah. and having responsibilities with the business. Imagine Jesus comes to you now like he did Peter and the apostles and say, come, follow me. Whoa, what you mean, though? Think about all that stuff. Yeah. What you doing? What you doing for the household? What you doing for your family? What you doing for your business? Yeah. And he said, he actually come down. He said, come, follow me. I'll make you fisher of men. Like leave the family? Remember, they left the occupations and they left family too. Yeah. Because in, in Luke, was it 39, I think it is? Um, yeah. 38, chapter 38. And, and it, it talks about Peter. Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. So he was married. Yeah. But Peter was with Jesus a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So all that time you spend in it, the comfort things and things that you're doing now. Would you be willing to sacrifice that stuff? Or are you sac what are you sacrificing for God? You know that you know the real answer? I know I want a fake answer. Yeah, I want a- <laughs> that would be hard. Not because of the decision to leave to go with God, but the 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 thought process that the not really the boys, they too young, but like the thought process that Ayla and them would have for be leaving. Or like not leaving, but spending more time doing those things. You know, it's a, well, that's the same question that you can ask her as a wife, as your significant other, as the mother of your kids and you. Would she sacrifice you to go with Christ? Yeah. I mean, I. No, I'm, that's a rhetorical question. Yeah. But I'm saying, but the mindset, because we often do things and don't even consider what we do for Christ or or consider doing anything for Christ or bringing him into the picture. Yeah. You know, we get so busy caught up in life doing stuff that we want to do. But let me ask you this. What does that look like? So maybe it'll be easier for me to kind of put together a question. If I knew, what does that look like when you're saying leave the family to come with? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that's what they did. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying you'll get a you have a better perspective now because you have those responsibilities now. You have a family and kids and they're growing oh. in the formative years. But now you can understand what they did. Yeah. What's how significant that was. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you never really yeah. meant for me to answer it. it was no, it, it was just it's, you understand when he told them to come follow him. Uh-huh. You understand because you have those things now. You can better understand how huge that was and how trusting in Christ they were, that was for them to do that. Yeah. And their spouses, because Peter was married. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like you understand now when Abraham was going to sacrifice his son. So what do you say in such, like, if you say a couple came to you, right, mm-hmm. and they're having, I would say, problems because one individual in the couple one one person is like i have to go out to fulfill the duties that god is calling me to do so like ministry all this other stuff and the other couple was like well there's responsibilities here like i need you here how would you have a conversation with those people where one is fulfilling the will that god is playing on their laying on their life and the other one is like well i want you here are they both christians yeah, in this scenario, but they're both Christians. Yeah. They have to definitely talk about that because there there has to be a balance, and that's why Paul distinguished that. You know, the the married person or the couple don't have the the time to commit like a single person. A single yeah. person, if you're single and you're a Christian, you belong to a church. You should be in ministry. Yeah. Why? Because you don't have the responsibilities or the cares or whatever. Of, of like a couple do with kids, you know, and I know there's single people with kids. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. But there's more time, and that's what Paul was trying to say. And so it is it, not, I don't think it's God's will for you be at the church um, 15 hours out of 24 hours a day, and you have a wife and kids, you know, like that. Yeah, because you there's a there's there has to be a balance because God put you together. He bonded the marriage. Yeah, you know. But my point was that you can just understand how huge that was, was significant, how significant that was, that they follow Christ. Yeah, 
you know, and that's then wild. die for. Yeah, that's actually wild. Yeah. But see, prior to you being married and having kids. It would have been easy. I would have been like, oh, yeah, I would have gone. And really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's that is hard. Like, and it's crazy because you'd be like, oh, I love God, blah, blah, blah. But it's hard, you know? It's like talking about the fleshly desires or like, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just That's just a hard, that'd be, that's a hard thing to think about when you put it in that perspective. For yeah. Me. But until you reach this point, like I said, now you're ready for the question. Was that the question or is there another question? No, that was the question because now you can say, oh, man, that is tough. Yeah. And that they did that, thank, you know. Thank God because I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's a lot of things that, you know, Scripture talks about that that's going to happen, you know. Yeah. Um, they say even the elect will be food. And it says God will give those who who didn't believe him a delusion that they're going to believe a lie of the Antichrist. Can yeah. I give? You know the question I asked you, like if there was two people that came to you and they were like having sh issues with like relationship because one is involved in ministry and the other one wants to be home. You know what I how can I give you how I answer? Sure. And then I want you to let me know if this is like because I deal with that because there's some people that the wife or the husband belongs to the church but the spouse doesn't. No, but like just say in this scenario both of them are believers in okay. Christ, okay? And so uh just to paint the situation, there's two believers in Christ that come to you, one person They're coming to you. Yes, yeah. me. They're coming to me as and one is a believer and they're uh, they're both believers but one is participating in ministry, one wants them to be home more, okay? Yeah. This is how I answer. You know how I answer and I want you to give me your perspective on how I answer this. Okay. The person that goes to ministry, right? They're married. Just put that out there too. They're married. The person that's involved in ministry, I would suggest finding a way to involve their spouse with them, within their spiritual gift. So like, I don't know, you say that one is an evangelist and one is going out speaking to people and all this other stuff. How can you involve your spouse within what you're doing to help out the kingdom if they're a believer in Christ? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I would suggest. Yeah. What is that? I would, I would too. Um, just like now, uh, the the stuff that I do in, in martial arts and, and in, in ministry, your mother served in a different capacity Yeah, as a, as a greeter. And I'm a, I'm an elder, uh, but we still go to church functions and things together. Like in the martial arts, um, I went to Vegas. I went to Vegas. She was right there with me. Yeah. Um, I spoke to the intercontinental hotel uh, leadership, men in leadership, she was right there with me. She's actually worked the table. And you know, I, I noticed something about that. You know what I noticed? Because I know mom, right? When we go to restaurants, as soon as we sit down, what does mom do? Like when we go to restaurants, when we sit down, first thing she does is move like the salt shakers and like organize the table. <laughs> and so when. When I when the video that you had of the event, um, the table was like pristine, and you're a very like organized person. But I know mom doing, and I know she was moving stuff around. She I was. I know that like, like I, but that's like her thing though, you know. And so I can see her doing that. I can see that kind of being within like her helping, like yeah. And so she's even though she's not in the martial arts, she helped in that capacity. Mm -hmm. And so, like you're saying, involving the spouse in some capacity in what you're doing. Now, do your significant other wants to be in the ministry that long, mm -hmm. you know, and just think, think a pastor of a church, you know, that's why you have elders in, in our church. We have the pastor and we have elders and we have deacons. And the deacons uh, uh, have, you know, family members that they're assigned to. And so there's some things that the elders can handle or the deacons can handle. And the pastor don't don't have to be there. Can you imagine like smaller churches when you don't have the structure like that? The pastor is not only doing the counseling, he's doing the preaching, then he's doing the teaching. He might be doing Sunday school and then he got visits and when people sick and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and. And the spouse, it was like, that time is sacrificed with that spouse. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, so we talked about, like, my situation of having a family, 
having kids and a wife and stuff like that and understanding that you have to sac- I have to sacrifice some things that may make my career or my like whatever go f- move faster mm-hmm. right how do you have a conversation with a person that's the opposite right how do you have a conversation with a person who wants a kid wants a wife or a husband um but they're not willing to sacrifice things that they have to do in their job or career for their family is that wrong i mean say it again i want to understand what you're saying so um you you say that there's the opposite of like my thought process right someone wants a wife husband and kids right but they want to have those things but they're not willing or to they're not willing to sacrifice like the stuff that they were doing before to progress their career. So, like, in my situation, I sacrificed sometimes sitting on a computer, doing content, making calls, all other stuff. They continue to do that, but they want wife, husband, wife slash husband, kids, or whatever. So they're putting their career and job over spending time with their family. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, in the, in the past, I've had individuals that I mentor – and help from situations like that. Uh-huh. And they resent their parent. Their parent? Oh, like the <clears throat> kids resent their parent. <clears throat> right. Because they spend more time in doing that because they're an executive or they're doing this and they're uh-huh. doing that. Yeah. You know, they don't come to any of the sporting events or they can't. They say, because I got to go here. I got to be there. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's resentment. Like, I only miss one of your races in, <laughs> when you were competing. Isn't that crazy? That's when I broke the record too. That's when you broke the record <laughs> because I was I was coming, but I had practice there because I think that was during the the districts the districts time. Yeah, and so I maybe had, that was a sign that you shouldn't come. <laughs> 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 Whatever, <laughs> but but <clears throat> it's not that. Um. I don't know what people have to think and that's the sacrifice in there uh-huh. you know um i wanted to be there that's why you you didn't know my accomplishments and i think you too you was like a junior in high school of what my martial arts car yeah i did <clears throat> you didn't know about it because i you didn't see the video until, until oh, later yeah i did <clears throat> 100%. I've seen that video multiple times. We used to go through those VH tapes all the time. And that's why part of it was erased. <laughs> you y'all I'm little. I'm not, not saying it was me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it was me. But yeah, I've seen them. I knew but, your accomplishments growing but, up. But, I mean, you were little. You didn't really re- realize. Yeah, but like I knew <clears throat> like all that you did. But I wasn't going to tournaments and competing in things Yeah, like that because of you and Tori coming up yeah. and, and the things that you guys was involved with. I was willing to sacrifice that. Now that you guys are older, you got your own thing going on. I started consulting, teaching, training again, you know? So you have to know what you want and know what you're willing to give up. And but what about the person that know, know what they want, but not willing to give up? That's first? selfishness. Mm-hmm. And then how many divorces, you know, are they on a third spouse? Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, this might be me, and this might be wrong to say. And this, you know, we might have listeners that might be in it. But I feel like if you want your know, marriage number three, marriage number four, it might not be the person. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the person on the left. It might Look at the person on the right. Don't see them. Guess who? <laughs> it might that. It might not be them. <laughs> it, might, it might be you. Like I don't, but I don't know. I don't think I have another experience to kind of co- the kind of comment on that. But like, I don't know. Well, I've I've talked to people that in situations like that, and they never think it's them. It's always the other person, you know. And so, real talk, you know. And and I hear you and Devin, you know, talk about that all the time. Real talk. People have to have that talk, you know. Like, man. It, Okay, what is the common denominator in this? Hey, mm-hmm. it's me. And so we have to be willing to change and work on ourselves and, you know, and at least understand the an, another perspective. At least understand. You may not do it, but you at least understand it. Yeah. You know. So what, that's, that's tough. What do you what conversation do you have with 
two couples where divorce might be an option? Like, is there a point where two you can, couples or just a couple? Oh shoot, just a couple. Uh-huh. Like, a, is a, what's the conversation you have with a couple that is um, playing, toying around with the idea of divorce? Like, how, like, how do you sit down and have a conversation with them? Well, um, they'll come together, and, and I've had that conversation, and and I, and it's you this and they this and that this and and never this and. and and I said, are you guys involved with a Bible study? Are you guys involved with ministry? And majority of the time, they're not. And so they're not around individuals to hear pers- different perspectives on that. Um, uh, what could help uh, in, in the foundations from scriptures where it strengthens your marriage and what God says about marriage and what he says that the husband should do. That's what really intrigued me about scripture when I read I was like what well, God says that I should be as a husband as a man as a father and the things that is talked about in scripture and doing those things so I made it made a conscious decision to do that because the men in my family the majority of them was divorced mm-hmm. and and I didn't want that but the difference in me I had a foundation I developed a foundation in Christ and started building upon that what he said to do you know um and what I should do as a father, you know, to protect you guys mm-hmm. and to cultivate the relationship and honor my wife, you know, and had to change my thinking and change the people, some of the people I was around. So let me ask you this, right? You have <clears throat> two couples, right? One. Uh, well, a couple. <laughs> I keep saying. You keep saying yeah. two couple. Yeah. You have a couple. Okay. You have, there's a couple. Yes. And one <clears throat> couple is. One person. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah too, too many people involved in this situation. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a couple. Uh-huh. One person is like, <clears throat> I want this out of my husband, out of my wife. And the other one is not fulfilling that. How do you have a conversation? Or you say both. Okay, let's do that one first and then we'll okay. go into both. So one one person in the relationship it's like, I need this, that, and third. The other one is just not doing it or seeing it. How mm-hmm. do you have that conversation? It's like that. It's like what we talked about, the person not willing to sacrifice certain things for sure. their family. My question is, why do you want that out of them? It depends hey, on how I, long they've been I'm, married. I'm going to be real with you. That never even thought hit my head. Like, why do you want that out of that right. person? And, and a lot of times it's because they're probably mimicking of the house they grew up in. Uh-huh. And they adopted some of those things. That's the things that they've seen, or the somebody's in their ear telling them, "Oh, I wouldn't do that," or whatever. So, a certain expectations. Yeah, but if and I'm assuming these people, if they're talking about divorce, they've been married some period of time. I don't know. It's a hypothetical situation. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and that plays a factor. I mean, like, why do you want that out of them? And then, and then that can that it in the person, that other person, the other spouse. Can they actually do that? And do they have a desire to do that? Or are you trying to mold them into what you want them to be? So could there be, could both parties be wrong? Or is there one that's more wrong than the other? It it could. I mean, like if Ayla wants you to do certain things or do certain and to do it a certain way, and that's not your makeup, you know, that could. But then again, our can you sacrifice some of the little things to make that person happy or fulfill that? Yeah. That's, those, those are tough questions that you have to ask yourself. And you can't base your relationship on how you do things in your relationship off of what other people do. Yeah. Because you're a different personality, different people. And there was some reason you two came together. Yeah. And if it's brought together by God, it was done for a reason. Can, I'm going to be transparent about Ayla and I relationship. Okay. So, I am like, okay, Ayla's creative, right? I'm also like a creative, too. I like to take something from the ground up and try to build it, right? Mm -hmm. Hence what I do for a living, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, entrepreneurship, like, uh, the the building and reconstructing and, like, business and stocks, I am intrigued in that, Mm -hmm. right? I would love for Ayla to have that same type of passion and mindset, but she doesn't. 
But Ayla you is, want to take her off, try to make her. I know. And that's, <laughs> and that's the thing that I had to like kind of learn is that. Yeah. So like Ayla has some ideas and like I'm always like if. Remember, uh, I think it was like two episodes ago. I was like, if you got a hobby, find a way to make it. You yeah. Know? But that's not for everyone. Right. And so I found myself being in a position of trying to always encourage Ayla to do these different things. But that's not what Ayla really wanted to do. Right. right? So she has ideas of like helping and doing different things, but not in a capacity of just like building up a whole business to do it. Right. And so instead of just trying to push this narrative like Ayla, go get an LLC, Ayla. Go get, go register a business. Ayla, go reach out to these people that can possibly invest. Ayla, go reach, go send email, all this other stuff. Is that I know what I want to do with the building up of my quote unquote career. Mm -hmm. How can I use Ayla's talents within that where she doesn't have to worry about all the stuff that she doesn't want to do? She can just literally do what she's good at. You know, so like I said, just about to, or not like I said, I said that in the other episode, but. In a process of getting a new facility, right? Mm -hmm. You know who did the blueprint and the drawing for it and made sure everything flew? Ayla. Ayla did. I can't do that. Right. Ayla's good yeah. at that. At one point in time, I told Ayla, Ayla, you should try to be an interior des designer. Start your own thing. Ayla, Ayla not interested in doing that right now, right? right? And so instead of just pushing her to go into these directions where she's not necessarily wanting to go, at least not right now, I'm like, Ayla's good at this. We're married. We're supposed to work together. Let me see how, how she can utilize her talents. To how we can she can uli utilize her talents. I can utilize my talents together. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. Like I was like, uh, Ayla's currently designing my whole office at the house, right? Mm -hmm. Could I do it? Yes. Would it be jacked up? Yes, right? So <laughs> I'm like, Ayla, right? You know, I want to put this office together. And she was like, let me do it. I was like, you do it. I don't, you can do whatever you want. I have no say. However it looks, that's how I'm going to operate it mm -hmm. because that's what she's good at. And so that's what I started doing, and that's why I realized that that I realized that really fast is that instead of trying to necessarily make Ayla do things that I like, that I'm good at, is how can we work together? And you know what I got that concept from? Scripture. I would like to say yeah, but no. <laughs> I actually got it from you. You told me something. Um, I think it was before we got married. You know what you said? What? You said that you have a specific fund for mom's talents. Mm -hmm. So like Christmas, like if you guys have events at the house, you have a fund where like if mom wants to entertain, because mom is good at like putting on events. Mom is good at cruise ship Karen. <laughs> honestly travel agent karen <laughs> like she's good at that stuff and you say you had specific funds that you put away to be able for your mom to utilize her talents right mm -hmm. and that's kind of where i got the concept i wish i could say i got it from scripture but i didn't well i got it from scripture okay well i got it from you so does that mean i got it from scripture? <laughs> uh, go to exodus chapter 35 and, and and it's it's crazy um and in understanding this but a lot of times we want what we want and then we want people other people to want what we want okay i'm in exodus chapter 35 okay and start reading at verse 30 and listen to what what god is saying you know i'm sick of you having me read all the time well you need more practice you know because <laughs> there's no pictures in here <laughs> okay 30 to what uh, 34. Okay. No, Mo 35. Okay. Moses said to the Israelites, the Lord has chosen Bazel, Bazella, Bazeli, ba Beziel, ba Bezze, yeah, Anamanapia, <laughs> the son of Uri and grandson of her, uh, from the tribe of Judah. God has filled him with his power and given him skills, ability, and understanding for every kind of artistic work for planning skillful designs are working them in gold silver and bronze for cutting jewels <coughs> to be set for carving wood and for every other kind of artistic work okay stop god did what he gave him what the skills to be able to do that stuff isn't that interesting yeah because how many times you think about those skills those are talents the god gives spiritual gifts and he gives talent he said skills ability and knowledge in all kinds of crafts yeah. So you don't have that. And then that's why in some areas, like when I talk to you about the computer stuff, she said, Dad, all you have to do is this. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I, that's tough for me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then 
but read 34 and 35. Uh, okay. Um, the Lord has given to him and to Olab, son mm-hmm. of Ashamech, um, from the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach their crafts to others. He has given them skills and all kinds of work done by engravers, designers, and weavers of fine linen, blue, purple, and red wool, and other cloths. You they are that? able to do all kinds of work and are skillful designers. Designers and skills and architect and all that stuff, God gave them ability. And see, you have to understand that when you see that stuff, you're like, oh, business out of that. But he didn't give that to Ayla. Mm-hmm. And see, now because you want it, you want her to want it. Yeah. And that's where friction comes in. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And 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 uh, you want the best for her. And you say, man, we can create an empire. We can rule the world. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be conscious of that. And I know that, like me, I'm a type A personality. When somebody tell me I can't do something, that's when I'm going into action. That, that's how uh, I feel. Too. And that's when I want to build something, and I don't need, I don't need the person to do it for me. They, I need them to show me or teach me so I can do it. Yeah, you know, because I'm a visual learner, mm-hmm. and so in understanding that challenges, like when even in sporting events, I like to take the underdog, the person that's not expected to do well, not expected to win. Mm-hmm. You know, because I came up through that. I was that person that they didn't expect to achieve. Yeah. You know, and so I want to work and do things so I can do it. And I don't need to have everything uh, right or be in my comfort zone. I'll get out of my comfort zone to try to achieve that. Yeah. And that gives me satisfaction. Yeah. But if I take the easy route, I don't get satisfaction out of that. Yeah. And so. I'm very cognitive of that in, in dealing with your mom because she's different from me. Yeah. And then when I open up the scriptures, I'm not just going to read it. And because I, or what I, the reason why I took you to that chapter 35 of Exodus, I was reading that and that jumped out at me. And I said, wait a minute. He gave them the, those skills and abilities, the talents too. Yeah. Along with in the New Testament, it talks about spiritual gifts, and there's a di- difference in that. And I want to say, well, why is it different? Because yeah. I continue with asking those questions, but I know she doesn't study like that, or she doesn't, you know. She has a different way of studying. Right, that. and I can't expect her to, hey, you got to do this and do that. You got to do it this way. You got to underline this. Now, if she asked me, how do you do this? Now she's ready for that information. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, because <clears throat> like what? Because the thought process is not wrong. Like, right. like mom's thought process, how she studies, is not wrong. Right. It looks what she wants to do and uh, the things that she that interests her is not wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think the issue that we have in our relationship is, like you said, is that you ask the question is why do you want them to do that? Right. And so like uh, when I quickly learned, like it don't matter how many times I ask, oh, did you get your LLC? All this other stuff. That's not what she wants to do. Right. And so it's figuring out how to have your be. <clears throat> motivate your spot to do the things that they want to do and mm-hmm. then if you can possibly do it together and so i don't know i just thought that was interesting